Welcome everyone, this is Pilot Needles and you're listening to Loto Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Loto and hear Loto Players. And this week we have with us Terry Adwin. Hi hi. And Sans Winda. Hello. Hello. And this week oh, we have a little bit of a patch. A little bit of a tiny patch. Mostly what? A little bit of a tiny patch. It does include uh, probably the most important thing here, some tweaks to Isengard, because they have released Isengard for the Legendary Worlds. Here I thought you were going to say the most important part was the new cosmetics. That is the most important part. Well, yes, but they're in conjunction with that release. That's what they're here to celebrate. Fair. And with this VIP and Lifetime members who log in between September 5th and September 30th will receive a free armor of the Isengard Dispeller as a gift. The armor is bound to account and is in the style of the Rohirrim, but is inspired by Isengard. I haven't seen Essent- it yet. I need to log in and look at it. Yeah. Essentially, it is using the cut and style of the pre-order cosmetics that came in with the Rise of Isengard. But this is blue instead of red, white, or green. And the other big difference is that the iconography is a little bit different to be more in line of the Isengard Dispeller. So if you're a VIP, then make sure that you log in so that you can p- pick this up before the end of September. And you can log into any server in order to receive this reward. Now, do you get it on every character after you've logged in that one time? Yes. That's cool. Yeah. And you'll get a blue box that contains it. That that contains it so that if you don't feel like using it on that character, you don't have to worry about opening, about having it fill six spots because it'll just fill up one. So, probably as soon as you put it into your wardrobe, you might not worry about it too much. I always keep copies, though. I mean, I keep the physical copy of stuff that's in my wardrobe, which is why I have yeah. three alts dedicated to cosmetic storage. Yes, but one of those cosmetic alts could just have the box and store away the box. Oh, what kind of fun is that? <laughs> the kind that lets you store more things. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think well, I'm no, you need, to have, <clears throat> you need to have the actual pieces available in case you decide to take it out of your wardrobe for whatever reason, and then you can put it back in the wardrobe. Well... Yeah, there is that. That's why it's in the box, unless you... (laughs) Until you need to actually put it back in. Anyway, we have our own opinions on how we store away our cosmetics, apparently. (laughs) So let's see what else we've got on Kidzu Kala. We have Tier 4 and 5 are now available. If you're looking for an additional challenge... Because tiers one through three aren't challenging enough for some people. Right, (laughs) if tiers one through three weren't challenging enough. And the following chests that appear in Kizuhala when run at tier three or higher now offer additional favored pools per week, for a total of two favored pools, and an additional non-favored pool available each week. The Maid's Mithril Reward and Mithril Chest of Dwarven Treasure. The health has been reduced on the Volatile Darkling, the Draining Dark Maul, the Corrupting Void Eater, the Spewing Tentacle, and the Spitting Tentacle on all modes. All of those names made me really glad that I didn't actually play through this instance. (laughs) Kind of wish they hadn't named it. (laughs) I was totally planning to port you there and convince you that you should run it. Yeah, I do have to admit that those names are appropriate. <laughs> Fair. Yes. The health of the Grasping Maul Head and Biting Tentacles has been reduced on solo mode. Thank 
goodness. Vicious Bite's cooldown has been reduced from 60 seconds to 40 seconds. The initial cooldown of Putrid Gas has been increased to 60 seconds. The Splash Filth cooldown <laughs> has been reduced. And the Putrid Gas damage has been reduced four tiers, two, and three. If I remember correctly, though, it it ripped me to pieces at tier one. <laughs> oh, no, just and again, solo. really glad I'm not doing this instance. <laughs> But it's pretty fun, Terry. You should do it at least once with me. Oh, yeah, with the future gas and everything. <laughs> hey, you've got uh, high mitts, right? It's totally going to be fine. Right. Sounds and... every bit as annoying as that, um, whatever that fortress is in Mordor where the floor is on fire. Nairban? It wasn't Nairband? that annoying. <laughs> and yeah, that was, I think that was Nairband. Yeah. And for the Rise of Isengard, the Rise of Isengard instance cluster, instances have received a major balance pass and should now be more in line with the expected player potency at level 75. This was, of course, in preparation for the legendary servers. In Tower of Vorthink, Saruman's staff no longer disappears, and he will always show all five colors for the ring phase of his encounter. And when appearing at the beginning of encounters... Besides his own, Saruman's movement speed has been increased, and delay to start the encounter has been shortened. I'm sure. <laughs> Those sound like good changes, actually. Yes. No more standing around contemplating whether or not he taught Sarah Okar or she taught him how to walk. <laughs> yes. And fixed various translation issues with the French and German game clients, and broke other things with the German client uh, <laughs> based on the red that I saw in the forums. And the 32-bit DLL for audio has been replaced with the latest OpenAL soft version, and the existing 64-bit DLL has been updated to the latest as well. This should improve sound capabilities for some users. For most players, the only visible change is that the former input option well, the generic software device will now be named OpenAL Soft Device. And that is the full list of changes. And other than that, not much else going on, except, of course, for the usual th complaints that happen when they open up a new area. <laughs> Oh, True Colors and Saruman Super Speed. Now, that's quite a threat title. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. Oh, but someone asked with the changes for Saruman Speed is, does Isengard still bid five? <laughs> <laughs> and the Pinion responded, always. Well, of course, that was the whole point. Then uh, let's head back to the beacon where we have beacon issue 127, where appropriately enough, we have a shot of the Tower of Orthanc at yeah. night. Whee! And for our community spotlight, uh, the Freesburg Fair is an open role-playing event on Laurelin. The event starts at 3 p.m. server time on September 29th. And Note and Zauber will be starting up their concert season. On, well, they started it th today on September 7th, 3 p.m. server time. So I will presume that they're... Hopefully they've got a list there. No, they... They don't, unfortunately, have the full schedule if it's every week at September 7th or monthly or what. But they did start it for this week. The Gleaming Thread has posted a new outfit, and you can see the outfit of the Oath Keeper. Yeah, this was a good one. A very Gondorian in its style. Yeah. And I used, I had to look up the chest piece. It's a Wildermore chest piece. <laughs> a Wildermore chest piece. That's a... Yeah, but the shoulders um, that it's combined with don't really take take away from that um, 
freezing cold look. So it looks more everyday than something. Mm-hmm. Then next uh, we have Second Breakfast. Ooh. Hosted some concerts and that, but that was actually they're hosting music concerts, games, and other fun things from Crick Hollow for their kin anniversary. They've already held the first two days of it. The third day will be tomorrow on September 8th. So if you're on Crick Hollow and are listening live, you could still check that out. And you can also check out performance on over the weekend at Laurel and at Knights of the Muses. So a lot of this stuff was stuff for this weekend. So for Ken Hall, if you play on the Crick Hollow server and are between levels 1 and 55, you should consider joining the Test Kinship. Please <laughs> ignore the Test Kinship. Please ignore Kinship. <laughs> yeah, I love, the, I love the Kinship title this week. It's great. Yes. We're a small group of friends who play mostly between 7 to 11 Eastern Time every other day or more frequently, time permitting. We've got our kinship set up so that you can enjoy whichever aspect of the game you find to be the best, while hopefully introducing you to other aspects that our members enjoy as well. For communication, planning, and hanging out in general, we utilize a Discord server. For more information, questions, or questions, if you wish to apply, send it to Dalekaran at PM, at PM, either on the forums or in the game through mail. Now, that's a rather strange time. Oh, oh, that's right. They're Crick Hall. So, uh, after all this stuff on Laurel and I got my servers crossed. It, it is Crick Hall. Actually, that is a reasonable time for a Crick Hall. Ken then. All right. Test kinship. Please ignore. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most interesting thing you've caught in the bywater pool? I'm pretty sure I caught a list of stuff that was still legible. Yeah. <laughs> and like presumably in one piece and not like falling apart as you tried to pull it out of the water yeah I don't know what the hobbits are putting in the ink and paper <laughs> over by water but that's some pretty powerful stuff right mm. like that's worthy of preservation in the ministerial library of bad things <laughs> <laughs> I mean maybe they laminated it before they threw it in but <laughs> it's a pretty good lamination then <laughs> Yeah, it would have to be if it... Yeah, I don't know how it managed to survive. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing what you could find in games sometimes. Also, all of the stuff on the list, the hat and the glasses and whatever else there was. Yeah, I don't think I've ever hooked glasses in real life in a pool. Or a lake or wherever. Well, clearly you're not fishing in the right lakes. <laughs> clearly I'm not fishing in the right lakes. <laughs> I've caught interesting things in real lakes, but not glasses. The interesting things? And anything that could be fun to share? or <laughs> Oh, boots, tires, uh, a sock you once. Actually did, you actually managed to fish out a... <laughs> Tire? No, but my line teacher got stuck on it and I had to go retrieve it. <laughs> well, yeah, that does make it tough. Then let's head into the fan site news. Get raid ready with Roxy! And you can watch a playthrough of Ost uh, Dunholth. And, of course, last week we had GTA Grand Trampling Ahead. Well, the Token Professor continued his journey in this week's Mythgard in Middle-Earth. And Adventures After Dark with Big Ed Mustafa to watch the latest stream there. And he watched Saturday's Journey of a Wandering Red on Evernight. Balvio continues with her lore master as you watch Lotro the Balvio Edition. Gravity 42 heads back into the Vales of Anduin, and you can watch the road goes ever on. 
And of course, you get to watch French Girl Gaming with a uh, Lotro Adventures with a French twist. And for our screenshot of the week, Baroneer sent us this week's screenshot. And Sans, do you know where that is? <laughs> <laughs> that isn't a place that I don't like to go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, who gave it away? <laughs> <clears throat> slightly webby. It's slightly webby, yes. It's, it's just a little bit of spider web, it's fine. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a spider Yeah, thing. and like the whole tree that's almost out of the screenshot on the left. Yeah, no, that's not just a little spider web. Oh, does that mean you're not looking forward to returning there? No. Not not particularly. Not particularly. I mean, unless we can go, like, on a mission to burn it down. <laughs> oh! I- I'm pretty sure that that is not actually what's coming, is go burn it down. Probably not, but if that's what should but be you, coming. You would love that to be an option. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure that Mithrandir and Even if it spoiled Radagast some quests, I would do that. Since when do the wizards actually want us to burn stuff down? Well, obviously like, the wizards the haven't down seen down these spiders. Burn it down. If the wizards like, had seen sure the spiders. Even when we were supposed to be setting fire to the fell beast, he was like, nope, wait, wait. Cut off its head first so that I can take it back to Minas Tirith so the scholars can study it. Okay, yeah. Okay, so set it on fire. So, you know, not great judgment exhibited by the Wizards of Middle Earth. So as far as burn as far as the need to burn stuff down. I'm i I'm just putting that out there. Then I think I really should send them in my stead if they don't want it to be burned down. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> you know, like blackmail, the new sands when the oh, blackmail. You know you're scheme. gonna go to you know you're gonna go. We the drag her there, kicking and screaming. Oh, the wizard's <laughs> gonna say jump and you say I guess maybe. I'll say fine, I need to finish this so that I can finally get to the end of the storyline. Yeah, that's probably what'll happen. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to go willingly. (laughs) You can go ahead and complain about the webs the whole time we're there. I will I will let you do that. Have a port to (laughs) Mickle Delving. (laughs) Yeah. A port to yes, of course. Yeah, all right. Very well, a port to Mickle Delving, always at ready. And you'll just try not to go to the Binbow Woods instead. <laughs> yeah, and make sure that it stays away from Scary, you know. But yeah, Mickle Delving, course. that's totally fine. Yeah, I can go back there. Right. Very well, then. And that's it for the Lotro Beacon this week. So let's head out to our store sales. Terry, what's on sale this week? Well, um, this is the last weekend of the double bonus points in the Lotro store. You want to get those now through September 8th. Um, apparently there's a new item, the Enduring Universal Toolkit, that's now available in the Lotro store. That yeah. sounds like a fantastic thing for crafters. It's uh, more durable and it harvests things a little bit faster than the Western Net. That's yes, always I, good. Yeah, I saw the complaints on the forum. <laughs> What, they're complaining because it harvests faster? No, they're complaining because there isn't something fa- that there isn't something better that metal workers can make. Oh, well. West and it is kind bad. of expensive. <clears throat> this is why you don't do crafting. Um, <laughs> we already talked about the armor of the Isengard Dispeller. Uh, Mordor is 25% off of the Lotro market now through September 25th, which is the one where you pay cash instead of Lotro points. Um, 25% off is actually a really good deal for Mordor, so if you don't already have it, now's the time to get it. Um, and then in the Lotro store, we have 25% or 20% off uh, select expansions and expansion quests, enhanced XP supply and the Hornbird token, skirmishes and instances, and the 100% mark acquisition boost. Like, you're not getting enough of those out of your Hobbit presents. Yeah. <laughs> and then the weekly coupon gets you a Tome of Tracking with coupon code Tracking Tome now through September 12th. Those are always really handy if you don't have a Pocket Hunter. Quite true. So let's head into our site news, 
where we have episode 20 of Where in Middle Earth is Emeraldina. Whee! And of course, last time we had a triple feature, and those were at Yarnfast, Keith, Thorns Hall, and Erebor. Which is what I said. I said dwarf place, dwarf place, and dwarf place. <laughs> dwarf place, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> cheating, cheating, and cheating. And speaking of dwarf places, <laughs> this looks like another one. <laughs> well, it's dwarven architecture, but I don't actually think it's a dwarf place. I can't tell because I can't pop it out. Now, is she doing another toast here? Quite possibly, yes. Oh, she forgot. Oh, she was working so fast to get out, it's not popping out. I, I'm obviously going to have to amend that pretty quickly if she doesn't get to it first. And we can get another look at it when that happens. It looks like to me that she's doing a toaster mode or something because I can't think, I'm trying to think what else will have her jumping like that. It looks like she's holding a mug, maybe. Of course, last time. I didn't see notice the mug when you were doing the toast emoji. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Then uh, let's then look at our new player question for this week. And who has the question this week? Uh, I have the question this week. But before I ask the question, I want to note that um, there, at least from the information that we have about the Enduring Crafting Kit... Um, as Gordon just points out, it's got a lower crit rating than the Westum Net. So, uh, if you like speed more, you might like the Enduring one more, but it might not be the best one. So, you could argue that. All right. <clears throat> Our question. Why are some cosmetic pieces not dyeable, and can you usually match their dye anyway if to other pieces in an outfit? Um, some cosmetic pieces are not dyeable because Standing Stone says so. <laughs> uh, so it's not like just a misuse of dye. There's no, actually pieces you can't for, dye. There actually are pieces that cannot be dyed. And you will know what those pieces are with, when you preview them in the dressing room and it doesn't let you change the drop down for what color they can be. Um... In some cases, you can find similar dyes to match. In other cases, you cannot. And you just need to find something that either complements or contrasts. Um, there are also a couple of pieces that are that have a unique color. And if you put them into the wardrobe, it actually will come up unique as the color name. Um, that is because there it is actually a specific color that cannot be matched via dye. Um, I know one of the quest rewards in the Minas Tirith's early part of volume, you know, like the early part of volume four, when you first get to Minas Tirith and are doing all the stuff before you get sent out of the city. Um, a couple of, one of those pieces, at least one of those pieces has a unique color on it because I, it, I didn't need it for armor purposes. Like I had armor that was comparable. So I got, what what I thought was the best cosmetic, and it was a light piece instead of the heavy warrior armor. And I put it in the wardrobe because I wanted to use it on a light armor character, and the color actually comes up unique. Um, one of the other pieces that I know of that has a unique dye is the Wigfeld cloak. Hmm. Um, yeah, and I discovered that because I had it and had not put it in my wardrobe, and I let somebody borrow it. And they did not realize that there was a unique color on it, and they washed it. Uh oh! Ow! Instead of, yeah, instead of putting it in the wardrobe and dyeing it there and sending it back, they they dyed it so they could use it, and then washed it and sent it back, and it, uh, yeah, it washed out the original color. So ever since then, if I've had to lend a piece on it, I'm like, put it in your wardrobe before you dye it. Yeah. So washing it doesn't just return the original color? In some cases, yes. In some cases, no. So in some cases, it has its own default color 
which isn't a die. In other cases, it has its own default color, which is a die. So if the default color is not a die, the wash will return it. But if it is That's a die, correct. it might wash it completely out. Yep. And oh. the only real way to tell is to preview it in the wardrobe and then select washed as your color to see if it changes the color. Interesting. That's good to know. Thank you. But yeah, as for what can be dyed versus what cannot be dyed, um, that's based on what what the artists that design the cosmetics say when they put it in the game. Makes sense. I know that there are lots of pieces that cannot be dyed. Usually they are either um, pre-order rewards, like the Rohira Murmur, that's a pre-order reward, cannot be dyed. Um, and then some uh, some of the raid armors can't be dyed. Like the Orthanc armor, if you get the Orthanc version of it, not the Mark's Medallions version, but the actual, like, go through the or- Orthanc stuff to collect all the tokens to get it, uh-huh. that also cannot be dyed. Interesting. But if you buy it with Mark's and Medallions, it can be? Yeah, because it's actually a different set, technically. That seems backwards, but cool. Good to know. Um, if you've ever compared, actually, the two sets of armor available at Hondurian, you have the of the West armor, and then you have the other set of armor, they have different base colors, so they will die differently. I didn't notice that. That's why you guys I'll keep me look. around. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell us all these things, and then we can go look at them. That's right. Be like, Wow. <laughs> That's the stuff that nobody really pays attention to, but I do. I'm glad you do. Thank you, Terry. Yeah, so in case anybody is is at all worried about stuff like that, you can always ask me those questions. I will always have an answer for you. And let's go and head into our what we did this week in Lotrin. Sans window, what were you up to? Well, this week, I... Uh, ran the new instance, The Depths of Kidzukala, with Pineleaf. Uh, and I think it went pretty well. We had... What? We survived. <laughs> two <laughs> Elrons <laughs> and two <laughs> Glorfindels. And yeah, we pretty much just took out the place. Uh, it was fun. And then we defended Bree. So that was good, too. And I got another of my... Uh, encounters that I need towards finishing up those deeds. So that was good. Yay! And during the field trip, I got two awesome new allies. So thank you for those. And I got them (laughs) ready to use before uh, defending the deep way. So, yeah, that was pretty cool and a good place to put them to the test. And I also did some inventory management and made sure the new cosmetics fit in my wardrobe and vault on Arkenstone, at least. Uh, so I'll have to do a lot more work to get them into my uh, wardrobe and vault on Landfall, but I at least succeeded on Arkenstone, so that was a win. How was your week, Pine Leaf? All right, let's see. At... Oh, my week this week, I began on my Honor Warden, where we finished questing in N and Wythe, where we finished and then headed out and into the land of the stag, meaning, of course, that being the first part when you first get into Dunland. So I started out Dunland in there to begin season four of my YouTube series, The Complete Pine Leaf. Wee. So why go that way instead of the other way? Probably the main reason I chose to do that is because I'd say about two-thirds of the time I go through the bone veils. So it's more for variation. The reason why you should go through the bone veils is because the road to get to the bone veils is a lot easier. 
Is but it really? This time, well, I find it because I I really don't like those woods that you have to go through. Yeah, it's a straight shot fire. down to the Von Bell, so it's supposed to go in through the marsh. Yeah, because you have a nice, beautiful road to get to the Bone Vales. Mm hmm. In other so words, normally... if I followed the road, I'd probably end up in the Bone Vales more often. Yeah, but since when do you follow the road? Never, which is probably why I always find the uh-huh. other place first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this time I decided to go with the stagnant, mainly for variation, because I think most of the times I've gone into the Bone Vales instead. I need to bounce that out a little bit more. It's interesting because I actually usually go through the stag because the story's better. Yes, that is, of course, another reason to go through that. I was just direction. wondering if that was if that influenced your decision or not. But oh, not yes, that question. that was a that was also a factor in the quest in the whole thing. The fact that I haven't done it in a while it has the better story, and. That since this is a character that's being completionist, so I had done that entire wood anyway, I'm a little bit more familiar with how to get through that wood than I usually am. I mean, you're completionist, so you're going to be going back to the Bone Vales at some point anyway, but... Oh, yeah, of course, I'm going to go through... As soon as I finish with the stags, I'm going to head into the Bone Vales and take care of that before going into the trap. So I'm probably not going to do the Bone Vales on the series, because... Who knows how long it'll be when Standing Stone decides to click in into Rohan. And I'd like to at least get all the way through Dunland before. Dunland has a lot of stuff. Yeah, Dunland has a lot of stuff. And then you have the Great River to do. And if they do another three month tour for this one, I am going to have a real tough time finishing all that content before then. So I hope they give it a little bit more time, especially since there's so much more content versus Mirkwood. I can see them not doing like big long gap between Mirkwood and Isengard because there's right. Mirkwood's fairly small comparatively speaking, but the Isengard expansion was actually really big. Now, fortunately, on his stream. Cordovan did say that they are going to consider the feedback that they've gotten concerning the amount of time they had. And I know at least some people who are listening to the stream were saying that, yes, because of the size of Dunland, 10 levels and the huge size that they would reckon in the four months. Cordovan made it pretty clear that they're unlikely to make it more than four months. Since four months was the originally stated interval. I mean, I basically completionisted most of Dunland in about a week, but that was because I had a bunch of time off and I was really focused on it. Yes. Well, my thing, of course, is I'm doing this at the at a close to the pace in which I'll be posting it on YouTube. Therefore, I don't have as much of a luxury just to rush through it or anything like that. Then on Friday Night Fights, uh, we ran two Scrades, the Ford of Bruinen, and Stand on Am- Stand at Amon Sul. We had seven in our group, but since we had someone in there who was 114, we ran them at 115 instead of at 120. I'm not even too sure I would want to try Ford or Amon Sul at 120 <laughs> with seven. <laughs> If uh, 120, yeah. That could be pretty interesting, though. I mean, maybe on Tier 3. Tier 4? <laughs> Isn't Tier 1 I, sounding I, I, better all the time now, Pinely? I, I would maybe do Stand It Out on Soul at a, maybe a higher level Undermanned. I would never do Ford of Bruin in, at a higher level Undermanned. That's yeah. just asking for trouble. I mean, if you had at least three hunters, it would probably be okay. Maybe like three hunters and a ring keeper, or two ring keepers no, and two hunters. For Fort of Bruin, and you have two NPCs who are basically suicidal. Yeah. Well, yeah, you'd need at least one healer for them, and probably a healer for the group too. Yeah. Or at least one <laughs> healer for them and a captain to buff everybody. A healer for them. They're not even just suicidal. They're just let's get everybody killed. Let's get everybody killed. <laughs> well, there is that. 
I'm sure there's a technical term for that, and I'm just blanking on it. <laughs> but that's totally the way, the way those guys are in that instance. Yeah, like they, I... they have zero sense of anybody's preservation. Well, there is that. It's you almost think they're elves or something. <laughs> Ooh, that's right. Your wonderful appreciation for the... Maybe if we gave them a campfire, we could turn them more into <laughs> rangers. They'd be safer. <laughs> well... Kandai well, no, rangers say... don't generally fare well in, in instances, because Kandai is plenty willing to get himself killed and stand at on Soul too. Fair. Especially I mean, I was more thinking part. about the ones who are like, Oh, my knee. Let me just sit here by the campfire while you go do something. <laughs> well, Candace says that for about 90% of the game that he's in. Um, you know, the part of the game that he's in. He does that for about 90% of the time that you know him. And then, except there's the 10%. You have, like, the 2% at Alman Sul, And you have maybe 1% at that retaking Weathertop. And then you've got the instance where... Um, <clears throat> apologies, spoilers for people who are doing Volume 3. Candace uh, gets himself dead yeah yeah he was so, pretty yeah. reckless in that instance but it wasn't it was a skirmish reckless. it wasn't but it was still an instance true yeah fair enough then during the field trip we received as since when it said we received a few gifts from at least I got mine from Finn and Finn sent us yep. a couple of level 95 first stagers. With instructions hey. to not make them too pretty since we're going to need level 100 ones soon. Yeah. Yeah, because we're probably... He was doing that in order to... as a feasibility study for when we do, do level 100s. So he wanted to dress rehearsal with that to make sure that there was something going wrong. Because I believe he... Made them on Landerville and then transferred them on to Arkenstone or something weird like that. Oh wow! I that is what it sounded like he did. We'll have to ask him when we see him next. Right. So he wanted to see whether or not that would work. It seems to have worked very nicely, and they're very nice weapons. Thank you. Yes. And a very I nice music the, book. Yeah, I think the legacies could have been better, but I would rather have great legacies on the level 100 version than the 95. Well, we can always make the legacies better by leveling up other allies, too. True. There is that. We do have a way around that at some point. And, of course, I have a couple of those oh, I forgot those items that give you an extra legacy slot you're saving but those for level 100, right? Of course I'm saving them for level 100. Just checking. So now I think I might have three of them, so there's always a possibility of using the third one, because I only need two of them. But most likely I'll save them all for level 100. Let's then head into News Beyond Lotro, where the Lord of the Rings adventure card game is now officially available on Steam. It has been on early access for about a year now, I think. And they are... Right now, we have the Steam version available, and during the autumn of 2019, they will be releasing for the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch, and the Xbox One. And this is, of course... Based on the Lord of the Rings, the living card game. Then in all the other game news related to Middle Earth is that Middle Earth in Minecraft is finally complete after nine years. Wow. So this has got to be one of the largest <laughs> Minecraft worlds anyone's ever taken to do. Uh, 
Those are some pretty good screenshots. Oh, yes. So they have here a screenshot of the Argonauts, the... and various other places all throughout Middle-earth. They said that they mainly based it on the movies because they have full visuals for the movies. So, so they had a more of a visual representation, which they do it. But there are also some places only in the books, which they, which they also worked on. So obviously those were based as much as they could on the books rather than on the movies but yes quite some impressive shots here i think i tried to do it but i've never gotten along too well with mods when i've gone into minecraft so and i think this is not only a world pack but also has its mods in order to have certain things on there which they couldn't get with vanilla minecraft as a result i never really Got to really see how it is on the inside. And finally, we have another wallpaper from Darren Loremaster. And this is the next section of Bilbo's All That Is Gold Does Not Glitter. This time it is verses 7-3. Through nine. And that is it for what's in this week's News Beyond Melotro. So let's go into the donations where we currently have some 18 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join this illustrious rate of players and help support Lotro players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast, your choice, or even be guest with us for an episode of Lotro Players News. We did not receive any emails this week, but if you'd like to send one, you can send it to podcast at lotroplayers.com. And you can also follow us on Twitter as the Players Alliance at Players Alliance, Lotro Players at Lotro Players, Arendis at Arendis, Pine Leaf at Pine Leaf Needles, Sandwinda at Sandwinda, and Terry Adwin at Terry Adwin. The Players Alliance has two shows on Mondays at 7 p.m. UC Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News. And on Saturdays at 8 30 p.m. UC Eastern Time, we have Lotro Players News. You can choose for our live shows at lotroplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight. And this is Pine Leaf Needles reminding you. Just skirmish responsibly. <laughs>